G'day and welcome to part 17 on the XL250 restoration and I reckon another three videos and we're finished. Uh, this one is all about the wiring, getting it all sorted out, fixing up and recoming the switches. Um, some of that stuff I've already done previously but we just sort of tidy them up and put them back on. I do narrow the bars in each either side and um, get it all ready, reconfigure some of the wiring which I didn't like. Uh, before we start I want to mention something about some of the comments. Now I I've been getting comments about the tail light and I'm very good friends with a guy who was in year 7 at school with Craig Travis and he and I used to sit there and look at all the Kawasaki and Honda and Yamaha, Suzuki, all that sort of stuff, brochures and the IT was you know, one of my favourites, the Yamaha IT and of course that's what I think this tail light's off. Somebody mentioned it in the comments and it did jog my memory. Um, Susie's here. Hello Susie. Susie hasn't got much to say. So... I have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yes, Yamaha RIT. Somebody's also uh, mentioned the TT, the TT 500s and 600s had them too. So it is a Yamaha part, and uh, that's the reason it looks really, really cool because I like those bikes as well. Uh, of course, the other comments I've been getting right throughout the build are the shockers, the rear shocks being upside down. Now, let me articulate this they're the right way around. Even though uh, they look to be upside down, you preach into the converted, I think they look better the other way, but they only fit one way. The spigot they mount to on the top and bottom is a different size. Now I can make up sleeves and mount them the other way, which is the way they look like they should be, but then there's going to be clearance issues between the sort of flared out part of the side covers and the top collar, of the, which is the bottom collar, of the shock absorbers. So they can only go one way, and that's just how it is. So having said that, I've said all I need to say. Um, I really hope you enjoy this. We're getting near the end. <laughs> And it's actually really, really cool. So this is the fun stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoy. The issue is this. Now, Honda have the wiring for all your stop and tail lights sitting in here, like that, in behind there, with a sort of a rubber boot over it, which I have somewhere. And it's sort of a boot a bit like that. that that's actually probably the one. I think there's two on the bike. There's one at the front as well. Now, these things are designed so that the other male part of the bullet terminal goes in there and they seal quite well now these ones here i'm not keeping they're good in that they're crimped on both sides this side and also on the taillight side even though that taillight was uh, the wiring was tempered with but i'm not reusing them they're stiff and they're really dirty and they look awful now the other thing that gets me is you've got the guard here you've got the inner guard there and this part here is open to the bottom of the seat the actual bottom of the seat shrouded to form part of the mud guard and so I don't want any electrical connectors there. So I've dropped it out of here. I've still got to put the indicator ones in. So I might unzip this and include them or just run them separately. I'm not sure. But your indicators sort of sit up the back under these bolts here. And that wiring comes through. Now I've routed it through behind the inner guard to here above the airbox. And I'm going to put a block connector there, which will look a bit like this one, um, which will have enough sort of spots. I think that's a six pin which will suffice nicely. And I'm going to have the block connector sitting here. I think that's just better all day, every day, because it's going to keep all the electrical stuff separate. I might even put a little clamp against the airbox there just to hold the loom there so it doesn't sort of flap around in the air intake, which is no big deal anyway. But uh, I think that's going to work out being better. Now, I've got a fuel line on, which is rather spiffy. Look at that. Da -da -da. Um, what's confusing on these bikes is we've got... Where did I put it? All right, you've got your crankcase ventilator down here. Goes in two. Can we see behind there? Through that little hook, which I think it's not in that hook. No, it's not. That sort of fits in that little hook. I've got to move that. Oh, strength. It goes in that hook anyway. And underneath here, you can see there's a T-junction with clamps. That was horrendous to get that on. And there's another drain coming off from the air box. Now some of these bikes, this one has a patch on the base of the air cleaner there and that's for a vapor separator, I think, or some sort of moisture separator. The 750 had one and this is the 750's one that goes on the bottom of the air box there and it's just a separator. But anyway, that's the CB750 one. This bike has provision for it but of course if you look under there we've just got a hook that's not there. Now all of this stuff on the XL bike drains out through here you can see that junction in there behind the wires just in there and they sort of come down here now there's a 
and air filter one there's the carburetor overflow which can you see in there and that sort of comes down here as well and there it is there now so onto this goes this little kind of nipple thing it stops muck and stuff getting up the top and it acts as a one-way valve for moisture so that has to go sort of in the bottom there trapped in behind there so it's nice and discreet of course i'll look around and see if i've got a nice plated clamp because that looks a bit dirty and i might try and clean that a bit further if you can see it uh, but the problem is this that third line on the original bike went up behind the airbox and it vents up under there can you see Oop, there now i can't find any reference in the manual for that anywhere i absolutely have searched high and low and I've looked on the internet, can't see anything. As far as I know, it just vents. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. We need to readdress it. Um, put an additional clamp on there. I think that's off the 750, I'm not sure. But this bike's going out before that does, so that's all good. Um, what else? What else? What else? Still got to do that bolt, shorten that bolt. Oh, punched out the stud. That's just got a nut sitting there until I get a domed one. I'll go up to Bunnings and or the local hardware and go and get one of those. That's just all sort of finger tight. That's just sitting there. Um, so those three will have dome nuts on them. I just, I might use an original Honda one there. I'm not sure if I've got one the right length. And we are, so far, not too bad. Before anyone says anything, I know that bolt's wrong. That's too short and the rear shock ones are too. They're about five millimeters too short or whatever but I think the wiring loom goes under there where the cables run, but I want to tape it off and uh, make sure it all fits well. Um, so I've ended up putting dome nuts on these down there and there. Where is it there? I think they look nicer, a bit more finished off. I've got some eight millimeter ones also for the headlight bucket and some Toyota bolts, eight millimeter ones, because I couldn't find the right Honda ones to stick them in. Should use a lock nut there. But of course, if you remember, we turned these on a lathe to give it the right, because there was a, Kind of a bolt similar to that it was probably a 5 16th just flapping around in there so i've made these sleeves to go in and of course when we i'm also machine the inside step so the headlight bucket itself doesn't get crushed um and that just sits over uh, i think originally there were reflectors maybe um there so i can just sort of nip those up but that looks a lot more finished off doesn't it the inside of the headlight bucket looks terrible but if we go around here, oh, see that? Looks nice. So, hmm, I like it. Now the guesstimate. Just gonna pop that on the inside. Ah, oh, crap, the 13. Hang on a second, I've got the wrong size. Sock it. And I'm sort of keen to do this so I can lay out the loom. I want to do the loom. And then, I should put a lock nut there. I don't know if I've done them tight enough because that's still movable which we might have to revisit that it doesn't matter it'll hold for now anyway i just don't want to over tighten anything oh, yeah there's a bit of movement there i think because of that stem i made on the inside of those spaces it's probably a tiny bit too loose but we can we can sort of sort we can suss that out later right so i got that sort of all hanging out the headlight bucket and none of it's taped up or anything i don't need to do that at the moment i just want to figure out the routing of it the um this thing here, I'm just going to move my trolley up, that goes in here and I think there's originally some plastic around there just to give it a bit more um, stability around the head stem, just where it's flexing around uh, and the insulation doesn't get worn through. So I might put some plastic around there then wrap that again in the fabric. That of course sits in this guide and underneath that mount is where I'm going to put it, I'm pretty sure it goes there. We've got... What's this thing? Flasher can. We've got a two pin flasher can. So what you'll find here is you've got a feed wire, which will be the black one. The earth will be the green and the gray one will go off to the indicator switch. I think. I haven't even thought about it yet properly, but anyway, there you go. I think that's the subloom comes off for the coil. I've got to go and find that. Otherwise I'll make one and that goes to the horn. And the horn's on the way from USA or Germany. I can't remember where. This earth, can't remember. And of course, we've got this thing here we were talking about before. I'm going to cut this right back here and just mess with it. I want it different to what it is now. I don't like how it is. So just to keep it nice and safe. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the soldering iron out. We'll start putting, putting a connector on there. I'm just going to strip this insulation back and redo some of these earths. Because one of them goes off to the taillight. 
Yes, it does, that green one there. One goes to the battery, which is the negative takeoff of the battery. So that's all going to have to be changed. So I'll leave the battery one there and da 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 da, -da and cut the other shorter. I'll figure it out anyway. I'll just, I'll make it up as I go along. But it is looking much better. So I've done those horrible jobs I wanted to this morning with the crankcase breather and the inner my guard and this thing here with the start and all this sort of stuff so that's all done and i'm really happy with it so i think now we'll bang out the wiring get that done hello again hello again all right so what we've got here our wiring wires well not really wires it's just i want to change the configuration of everything this loom uh, i think went under the engine mount there along the inside of the frame Joined up with the back, which we're going to mess around with, like I said before. Honda used a sort of a factory crimp. Now this is the, oh, what is it, the earth? Hang on. It's the negative battery feed off here that goes back to the earth on the frame or the engine. I don't know what that goes to. And then off to the stop and tail light. It's also sort of joined together. Now what they've used is they've used this electrical tape, which look, it's lasted this long, so it's not a big deal. I'm not going to start cursing about it, but... I'm going to cut it down here somewhere. Oh, where are my side cutters? I think I've got my needle nose. But being nipex, they work well. So then we can just sharpen that up a bit. I need my proper side cutters. This is ridiculous. Okay, so we know that goes there. That's cool. And we've got to also feed this earth back into it. And the battery feed. So I'm going to cut these mother suckers off here. Like that. Cull that bit because I do not want it. And then we're going to join the stuff back. So the battery one, this one, and this one are all going to get soldered together. It's a pity, actually, it's like this. I don't like that. It was too much of a mess. But I think I might even take all that off. That's better. And just join all this in and then have the um, the rear, the taillight thing off it, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to um, continue because that's what I'm doing. I'm just working away, getting myself through this. This is really, really relaxing for me, this stuff. If I feel stressed, I'll come and do wiring. And most people, a lot of people tend to worry about wiring. There's a YouTuber called Eddie Wu, and he's a math teacher. And he's very successful. A very successful YouTuber. He had like 40,000 subs at one stage. I think he's up to 200 or something now. He's a magician, this guy. But um, he, I reckon half the problem with maths is kids are scared of it. Or people are scared of it. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then that doesn't look as tidy, I guess, but I think it's the only way to go. I was going to have a bit of green wire. Oh, gee whiz. I'm getting fat and old. And draw another piece in. Dock that. And I reckon we can join all this up and sleep at night and feel really good about ourselves. What do you think? So I'm just going to join that in. Da -da -da -da. Like that. And solder the crap out of that, put the heat shrink over it. And that's going to serve our purpose well. Right, yeah, so I've soldered this. I didn't show it because, I mean, how much do you show and how much don't you show? It's like, I can have a simple and go, and then we're going to do this, and you're just going to go, you know what, you're boring, shut up, idiot. And I'm trying to get, I've got 12,000 subscribers, which is pretty good, but I want more. And. You're not going to get it by being boring. But, come on, get on there, you son of a gun. There we go. That's all good. And we'll just shrink him up. You meant to use a heat gun, not a cigarette lighter, but we're using cigarette lighters today because we can. Brake light switch. Right, so why don't we give that a haircut too, eh? And, Bob's rifle. And you know what? It's just more of the same stuff. Joining, well, joining wires and heat shrinking and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe I put the heat shrink on first, hey? I like solder joints. I like them more than crimp ones, even though there's nothing wrong with crimp terminals. All your factory terminals are crimped. But solder, I'm fussy with. This is this nice thin stuff. And you stick it on. And like so, even though I've got the wrong glass and I can't see anything. Oh. See what I mean? Can't see anything. And it just flows so well. It flows so well. It's like I'm in a shampoo commercial. See? Look at that. How good does it flow? Okay. What does Mark Evans say? 
um, if you want to watch great TV, the Is Born series. It's Mark Evans, and he's a veterinarian from the UK. I think he was head of the RSPCA over there. And he does the Is Born series, and he builds a motorcycle. So as a bike is born, he builds an MG. As an MG is born, he does a car is born, with an E-type Jag. And he does all these other Is Born. He even made a helicopter. Was it a helicopter or a small ultralight? I can't remember. He's a magician of a guy, and he's a vet. Absolutely great telly. You'll love it. I'm only going to put bits of it on just to hold it in place while I figure it all out. And you'll find you have different things you like doing. I love wiring. Wiring's just cool. It's easy for me and therapeutic. Okay, so if I bang another piece there, then I'm going to know irrefutably if I'm in the right spot or not. And then I can wrap it properly. Once I figure all that out, you can just wrap it up properly. And well, like they say, Bob's your uncle. So there we go. And what can you see through that jolly viewfinder? Because I can't see what you can see. Can you see here? Kind of up the top, aren't we? Hang on a second. There we go. Is that better? All right. So these ones here are all going to that plug. These four, there's two battery. The red and the black is battery, positive and negative. No, I'm telling lies. The black and the yellow, or green with yellow trace is the brake light, and the green and the red is battery. Clear as mud. But in the meantime, I think what we'll do is we'll just stick them over there. We'll just stick these over here as well, and then we'll concentrate on sticking that little plug in. This is the loom that comes up from the alternator. <laughs> I have to think about that. Needs a bit of a clean up. It does look grungy, but we're gonna have a lot of that hidden. Um, we've got to join these two to the original plug off one of the parts bikes, because that's the one that goes up under the fuel tank. So I've got some heat shrink, which is what I always do. Slide that over down here so it doesn't get too hot. And then we can sort of um, solder it up and burn this crap on. This is where I burn my leg and swear uncontrollably and then cut it out when I come to edit. I keep getting these flags on YouTube that my stuff isn't suitable, which really annoys me because I go out of my way to behave well. I guess it's the other plug that is meant to go on these two wires and that's from the pickup for the CDI. Uh, but these are a little bit frayed on the inside there, so I'm just gonna wax some tubing. Doing here. And it might also give a bit of reinforcement to stop it flexing about so much, but when you buy a <laughs> when you buy <laughs> shrink tubing, you buy it like a meter of it. It's like uh, three bucks or something from J-Car. Yeah. Don't buy it in the Narva packs. I used to, but I only ever bought it in the Narva packs. I knew I'm going to use all sizes because it's sort of like a variety of different sizes. So I'm just going to pop this down here and sort of rotate it onto the back of the terminal. And then when I hit that with a cigarette lighter, it'll stay there and I'll be happy and Dave's bike won't blow up while he's riding it. Uh, maybe a bigger size, do you think? Maybe, I don't know, she'll be right. It's a good old Aussie saying, she'll be right. And what it means is everything's gonna be fine, even though things are looking completely knackered right now. Everyone says that. Oh, they used to say it, Dad used to say it. His generation used to say it. But then he was born in 1925, and that was probably before they had things like books. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, right, okay. Oh, that does look good. I'm taping this stuff up. These are the looms. This is the loom from the alternator. We've got the other one coming up here. I thought I had some of this um, woven stuff. I'm just using the fabric over the, there's a plastic sheath under there too. It sort of comes up underneath that engine mount clamp. And so the engine is on. The tail lights are hooked up. The rear indicators haven't got yet, so it's no big deal. Right, so it's all looking fairly tidy. I've kept the opening free for the air intake. This is the loom here, and it's all snugly sort of strapped against the frame, just because this is your throttle down here, and we don't want anything interfering with that. So it all has to be tied against the frame there. The um, engine looms come up from the bottom, and they come in behind this frame member, which is pretty much what the book says, I think. That wasn't originally there. That is, I've got a couple of frame earths, but I wanted a separate engine earth as well. So I've just gone down 
or framer, sorry. I've just gone down here. The engine, of course, is earth through the frame. So that's hidden behind a side cover, so I don't think that matters too much there, and it sort of comes up alongside the others. What I forgot to do, like an idiot, I've got to put the CDI in. So I started wiring it without any way the thing could get a spark, which is just dumb. I've also changed this over. So you've got power feed and then off to the indicators, which is what's supposed to happen. That third one's an earth, so I don't think we need that on this type of can, but you know what? How many times have I been wrong before? So I'm just going to squeeze that through there and try not to break the grommet, which is sort of semi kosher It's got a split in it, but I think it's going to be alright. And then we can just put this. That's all the wiring for the CDI. I'm just going to tuck that behind there. Well, tuck that behind there. And that should be reasonably good. I can't really get that any tighter over that, though. Because there's got another one going around the other side. So... I think that's going to have to do. I think that's going to have to do. So, what else do I need to do? I might just zip tie those together. Chances are, look, you do all this stuff and you end up taking it off because something doesn't work. And the... I had some plugs left over and I thought, what the heck's this? And that's when I found it. I just don't want any way that ignition coil feed can come adrift or anything like that. So we'll go in here again, another petrol tank spoiler. Now uh, here, so that looks pretty, that looks a lot tighter on the other side actually. I sort of scotch bited this, I didn't do it to the other side, I probably should take it off and do it, but you know what, I've wired it, I want to see if it works first. I was going to put the HT lead on, it screws in the front of the coil there, that's all wired. So theoretically speaking, I'd bang a battery in this and turn the ignition on, we should see voltage. But I haven't finished doing the brake and battery wiring there. There are two front brake switches. These bikes have an actual brake light switch in the front brake. So there are two of those. So I can refurb one of those and use that. As usual, I'm more inclined to refurb the one that hasn't been touched than the one that's been brush painted. That just annoys me. I don't know why guys do that. It just pisses me off. Um, and of course we've got these. We've got one kill switch, which looks mangy, but it is functional. This is the one I pulled apart and cleaned out. I pulled apart and cleaned out two of them. So I can do something with that. And then there are two um, of these combination switches, which is your headlight, your turn indicator, and your horn. So anyway, look, at the end of the day, I reckon we just clean this up. Might just put a little bit of enamel clear on there or something just to sort of lift it a bit. But I reckon we can use that. So I might begin with this. Then at least I can check the horn with the test light. We've only got high and low, and we can check the indicator integrity and then stick this on. At least then that's an engine kill, we can check the spark. Oh, look, it does have off Parker headlight, I didn't realise. How stupid am I? Hmm, pretty stupid. Anyway, that's a start, no idea what else I can do at the moment, because I'm sort of losing my mojo today, I can't be bothered, I've done a couple of hours, so it might be time to quit for the day. I've rattled on about this stuff before, this is electrical clean and lube, it feels like a solver when it comes out, it's about seven or eight dollars from J-Car Electronics and very, very good stuff. You literally, I've already done it to this, I'm just sort of demoing. You literally fill everything up. Particularly if you use a water display, it's like a water display, but if you sort of hose these things off, it does a stonking job. Look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Do you like it? I like it. Anyway, so let that dry. And it will also put, it's not just solvent, it sort of flushes stuff over so it feels like brake clean when you use it, but it leaves a sort of a very, very mildly oily residue behind, which wouldn't be straight oil, it would have something else in it. Right, yo. I'm in my slippers, it's night time. All right, so we've got this little brake light switch on, it's a bit crappy in quality, but I think it's gonna do fine. We've got this little battery. And I'm gonna see if it fits in the cabinet. Which actually surprised me because this, the positive is not insul oh, yes it is. It's not insulated too well. You'd think the female would be positive and the positive, the negative would be male. So I'm going to see if that fits and good news, it does. So I can chuck that in. Just let it sit there for now. That's a nice little fit. That's cool. Uh, these, there's a, couple, there's a couple things here. I don't like where the exhaust is. Can't avoid it. I'm going to run 
the wiring and then strap it up to the top and I might even kick it down the outside there. The side cover sort of covers all this stuff. The other thing is I want to work out, that wire is probably the right length, but I want to put a fuse in, so I'm going to cut that too. But what we can do, we've got the, I'm going to plug it in now, like that, just it'll keep it insulated. I reckon if we just leave the fuse holder sort of sitting up there, I don't know if it's got a fuse in it actually, oh, it has got a fuse, it's got a fuse in there. And then bring that up and sort of have it, so I'll cut that shorter. Oh, and it should be, <laughs> it should be all right. I just want to stay away from that and bring it down, sort of like that on the outside. Where's that side cover? Let me just have a look to make sure it's all going to be concealed. If we put that there and that there, oh, that hides everything. It's just the seat comes down there. Okay. So what we have here is the switch gear. We've sort of um, cleaned and lubricated the inside. I cleaned it a while ago, but I've just given another shot of lube in there. So it's reasonably slippery because the solvent sort of evaporated off and left this sort of slippery residue. So what we need to do is need to wipe it off. And we're not going to think about using thinners for that. We're going to use good old prep wash because we can. And give it a wipe get all that residue off because what we need to do is we need to it's got some muck in there too I need to dig that out we need to re-white the font on the lettering and on the horn it looks pretty good but on the rest of it it doesn't so and I normally start these sorts of things by saying right and there's a kid at school Harry that finds it particularly amusing when I say right so Harry this one's for you right <laughs> he likes it um, right, so, right, I've done it again. He, the last video, I think he counted um, seven rights. <laughs> I don't know, something like that anyway. So, we need to clean this up a bit more. Now, you can buy non-genuine switches, and this is the deal, don't. Because you'll get a new switch, but it will be rubbish. And a good example of that is the brake light switch on the MG, the little hydraulic switch. There's six bucks for a new one. Very unusual for the old ones to fail. Nice. But mine did. And I actually had to wire in a relay. I went through a few of them. They kept blowing because the contacts are that light and flimsy inside them. That, um, I won't go all the way in. That they keep failing. So I had to put a relay in. Just because they're so trashy. Which is bad. It's like if you do up an old Toyota, you wouldn't dare get repro switches. You just do up the old Toyota switch because it's going to last. Because that's what Japanese stuff does. It's just better all day, every day. So I think what we need to do now is get our screws because I had them plated. Quite new, not those ones, they're too big. Maybe these? Oh, that fits well. So let's take a punt on them. Get a couple of those, same length, yep, good. See if we can bang this thing together. And it's just going to look whoops, better all day every day if we do it like this. And that way it's not going to be unmanageable when I handle it. Oh, look at that. It is so splendid when something works like this. Anyway, whatever. They're all right. So what we need to do is get a slight bit out of the casing there, but I don't think that matters too much. We're going to find something which is going to let me put those the lettering back on. I might just get some smooth paper because this thing is scratched around here. Let's give it a light sand. It's going to work. Got a brush and a little bit of Wimbledon white off my XW. XC, I beg your pardon. In your case, Harry, this is Wimbledon right. So hang on a second. I'm just going to cut this. Probably not going to work. Give it a shot. We don't want too much on there, though. We only want a touch of it like that. And see if we can dab that on. Oh, crap. That looks awful. Nope, that didn't work. All right, let me start again. I need to use this bit. I need to use that bit there. But too much just leaks straight past. I don't know if I'll just go... Yeah, what do you think? That kind of sucks too, doesn't it? I can get it off the side where, it's, where I've missed it. I can just sort of wipe it off. 
but we want it to look good. We don't want it to look like Ando did it in his garage, which it does. But the other thing you can do, because it is such quick drying um, paint, is you can just get a dual screwdriver and scratch it out. So for example, in that rebate there, I don't even know if you can see this, it comes out. Uh, these are the hand controls. Of course, this is the clutch one. This is the one that was off the painted, brush painted bike, and you can see I've sort of wet sanded it. Got to let that dry properly. Once it's wet sanded, a new fitting in here, new cable, mirror, and a little pinch bolt. Tell it a million dollars. Throttle housing, throttle cable housing. There's the other bit of it there. And the brake one. Now, the brake one's different, obviously, because it has a switch. And they became law after some year, I can't remember why. Traditionally, motorcycles only had a brake light switch off their rear. Is that the right one? Yes, that is the right one. This, these have them on the front as well as the rear, and they're connected through the headlight. Got to still clean this HT. I'm still going back on. Got my wonderful $14 chain breaker, and it's crap. But all it has to do is break one link. <laughs> and we can stick the chain back on, so we're good with that. Um, what else is there? I've just got to sift through and get some of this plating. People are always very positive with what I do, saying how good it looks. And the rest of the day, at the end of the day, sorry, um, all it comes down to is paint and plating. That does an incredible amount for the appearance. Painted bolts always look terrible, I reckon. I just don't think you can get past that. But when you paint something and then put the bolts in later, it always has a better look. Now, um, having said that, I'm going to use a rattle can for these. And rattle cans are fine. You can use rattle can as base coat on your fuel tank and your side covers if you want, provided you're clear with something appropriate. In fact, I would only I wouldn't use rattle cans on plastic. So if you've got steel side covers or rear guards or whatever, you could use them on that. Now, Retro Restore's done it on his Piaggio and he's got a beautiful black paint job and Hackerweek did it on the fiberglass fuel tank he made for his C B seven fifty, was it? No, it wasn't, it was the interceptor thing. I can't remember what it was. But he used it as well. Um now you can use rattle can paint, it goes on nicely and all that, but it's extremely thin. Its coverage is virtually nothing. Now what these guys do, of course, is they go over that with a clear, and that's what you need. You can't use a rattle can by itself on a fuel tank, it would look terrible. Um, but once you clear over it, that protects it and also gives it a bit of sort of depth, if you know what I mean. So these still need to dry. I might just rub them back a bit more, there's a few shiny spots in there. If you do use a rattle can, yes, make sure you read the can properly and it's suitable for exterior. There's a lot of paint that's cheaply formulated that's only suitable for interior because you know, UV stable paint's a lot dearer. So, I'll let these dry. This is the one off the junker bike and it has multiple gouges somewhere. I saw gouges on it. Maybe it's not. Oh, there. It's all sort of gouged up in there. So I'm going to use that and put that away. And again, this is just an exercise purely in going around finding the best kit for our bike. Motocross bars, they're a little bit too wide. I'm going to take 25 millimeters off each end, so I'm going to have to take them off. I want to mount them permanently and start putting switch gear up here so I can sort of move ahead with the bike. Um, these are wider, these are wider than the original ones. They're also a tiny bit higher. And given that we have a very ominous clutch cable, in that I don't know if it's going to be long enough, I'm going to narrow them. They're about two inches wider overall than the old ones anyway. I've got an idea, wrap the tape all the way around it so you can see and also I'm going to use a new cutting disc so I can just do it in one hit. Goodness me, alright then so we can take our tape off and it'll have a bird edge on it. We never get a grip or anything over that because it's sort of all hanging out and rough so I'll just file that off you can use a rat tail file inside to deburr that and we're good doesn't need much let's get a rat tail and we'll go around the inside and we're good don't want to forget to tighten this do we Some bolts, you don't need to plate. These look like they've got some sort of stainless on them. I just chuck that through a grinder, or a, what do you call it, wire wheel, on a grinding thing. Came up like new. And there are some stainless bolts. Some of the ones on the, um, the clamps on the triple tree for the fork tubes are the same. So I'm just going to stick this on, and there's dots quite often that correspond between these, because they're sort of a tapered clamp. And to get the right amount of load, 
Hang on a second, I've got to go and get my spanner. That's uh, important that they're in the right spot. So I'm just going to nip these, I'm going to hop on and get it m virtually central. Well, I need to get it central. <laughs> and then, uh, and in the right sort of right back. I haven't got a seat on or the tank or anything like that, but um, it'll give me some sort of idea. I don't know if it's going to be like a frame now, but so I reckon that's pretty good. And that's around about right, I would think. That's what I'm going to do it for now. And looking at it, it's fairly central. This is very easy to adjust if we need to later on. So I'm not overly worried about it. Of course, here's our switch gear here. And it's nice and positive. Um, I tried to do the white lettering, and you know what? I rubbed it out again. I didn't like it. But you can see that's a very light clear coat just to protect it. And we can just loosen those off and slide over the bar. And then I can start wiring this thing. That's the reason I cut into the bars. I actually text Dave today and said, can you give us the width of the old ones? I remember them being about an inch. I can't see them silhouetted. I remember them being about an inch um, narrower than these ones. So I've just cut 25 mil or 25.4 mil is an inch. I can't see what I'm bloody doing. I've got the outside the door sort of blocking my view. Um, so I'm really hoping he doesn't mind. I don't think he will. Dave's pretty easy going. Right, so rum, rum, rum. we're good. Uh, right, so we're going to switch in. I'm just going to pop them through the back. Um, it's all temporary for now. Where the hell do they go? I think we're going from underneath, don't we? It doesn't matter. It's not important. It just means that it's sort of a bit child's play. There's only one plug sort of fits each one, so you can't really get it wrong. Um, that's the beauty of the Japanese. They just build beautiful stuff like that. And so this one here is a red plug. I mean, how much easier can it get? So I'm going to pop that through there. Should I move the camera? I think I should. Hang on a sec. And, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty child's play. The only issue is going to be if it doesn't work. And that's a very, very high possibility because I've had every single bit out of this. We've rebuilt the whole bike. Um, but that being said, everything's color-coded, so... There's our hand controls on, so we can start popping voltage through this. There's the parker for the headlight. And of course these I've labelled, um, they go to the headlight. That is a ground, and that's the high and low beam for the headlight. And the issue is this, that wire, the pinky one halfway down the bike, that's not connected to anything. Um, that's the one that was originally powered from the alternator. And I'm going to have to fiddle with that, because I reckon I might have to run DC12, switch 12 into it. This one here is the only real plug left. These are all just little bits for indicators and stuff like that. Right turn signal, I mean, basic. This one here is the instrument binnacle lighting. And it's not the, um, to illuminate at night time. These are your warning lights. So you've got your, your light green. That's not light green. It's orange and light blue. That's your right and left turn signal. What will happen is each one of these, depending on which way you're turning, will energise and the other one will act as an earth. So as a globe connects to those two. That one there with the light green and the red trace is neutral stop switch. That could be a power feed there um, for the light on high beam will run independently um, from the blue, this one down here, I think. It might not be that one. Whatever the case, it's not going to be too hard to figure it out. But um, Let's have a look around, eh? So that, I'm all happy with that, um, the switches and so forth. I, As I said, I ended up taking the white off. I didn't like it. That's all lovely down there. May have to meddle with it. That's the one I'm talking about. That's a feed. And the alternator didn't have the right wire coming out of it for that. So this is made up of the loom of two bikes. Uh, battery fits in beautifully. And I've left a bit of slack on the positive side. There's no fuse in there yet. But I just want that so I can sort of be... I might put a bit of Velcro on it just so I can sit there. And of course there's a, a cover that goes there. All the wiring for the rear brake switch is in. I don't like this. This is what I'm worried about. And I don't want the wiring coming over the top because the seat will squash it. I think it will. Um, but that's too close. It's a... It's clearing the exhaust well, but there's a cable tie I've got there, which isn't. It's sort of very close to the exhaust. Don't like it. This one here is, of course, we've spoken about that. Oh, this here is hanging off because it's drying. I've just painted it, so we don't have to worry about that. And it's all looking pretty good. So what I want to do is get these wires sorted out, test the circuits that I can test. They're the ones I managed to paint that look quite good. Um, 
and check the horn circuits. All that can be tested, and I'm tipping it's going to work well. I've just got the ignition switch sitting there for now because the instruments are off at another place getting looked at. So um, after that, I, of course, want to put the... I've got the throttle housing being painted at the moment, or I'm painting at the moment, and we can sort of plumb up and wire up. What do you do? Do the, the throttle cable. So at least we've got a throttle there. Um, we've got all these other bits and pieces over here, which um, have been plated. And all this stuff's going to look absolutely lovely on the bike. It's going to look like a new bike, and that's what I was sort of aiming for. And I reckon we're kind of there. I really do. Uh, so I think next time we'll finish the wiring, run a, a bit of voltage into it, see if we got a spark, and, well, put oil in the engine and kick it over, I reckon. Anyway, look, until then, hope you've enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves, of course, and uh, enjoy classic, and I'll see you around.